You ready? Yeah. All right, cool. Hey everybody, it's Caitlin, and I'm here interviewing my friends about their awesome professions, and they're gonna tell me about cool, cool things many people don't know about. I'm here with my friend Jim. Jim's a rolfer, and that's a structural integration. We'll get into what that all is from the master himself. Jim's been doing structural integration rolfing for 29 years, working on hundreds, or would you say more than that? Yeah, a few of them. Yeah, just a couple in 29 years, giving each of them 10 sessions more or less. So, when you're, when you're rolfing someone, it's a lot of hands-on work, and the questions, I think, come afterwards, because you get physically, structurally integrated, and kind of mental and emotional things can happen as yes. well. Yes. So, afterwards, when there's all this epiphanies or whatever happens, then people are done, and they never really get to know more about what has just happened to them. Well, each person has their own journey. And so while they're going through the work, I'm changing their body, and there's a lot happening physically. But once that's done, the body, it's not like the body's perfect or anything like that, but now what we've done is we've flipped it so that the body is more organized, most of it. And so it's the rest of it, other little pieces, are looking to fill in. And it takes time to assimilate those changes as time goes on. And that's why there's that long period after the person's finished the series where there's a lot that happens. And you change the physical structure. Well, the psyche, the person that lives in that body, is going to change too. So if like, your body doesn't hold as much tension, doesn't hold stress, well, your mind's not going to hold as much stress. And as a result, some of the things you value or some of the people you want to spend time with might change. And so it's, it's, it kind of moves a person's personal evolution forward a little bit. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you are organizing a person's fascial tissue. And everyone knows a little bit about uh, the musculoskeletal system. You have a circulatory system. You have a nervous system. How come fascia is never really talked about? Why don't we know what about it and what is it? It's a good question. Um, fascia is basically this connective tissue that gives you your shape. So if this is a bone covering around the fascia, we call periosteum, it's fascia. Tendons, fascia. Ligaments are fascia. If this is a muscle, the covering around it is fascia. If you look, if you break it down to the muscle, individual muscle fibers, each one of them is surrounded by fascia. You take each muscle fiber, you break it down, and the actins and the filaments, more, it goes right on down to the cellular level. So there's an old expression that if you were to take the fascia away from you, all you'd be left with is a pile of goo, because it really is like the organ of shape. Does that make sense? Yes. Absolutely. So how does, it, how does it work that you're able to restructure someone's tissue? Why is it a thing that's even possible to do? Okay, I'm going to try not to get too technical on this. Okay. But if you if you've, think of quartz, one of the th properties of quartz is if you apply pressure, it releases energy. Fascia has a crystalline matrix that's similar in some ways where if you apply pressure, it releases energy. As you go through life and you, you, know, you fall down some steps, you fall off a bike, you, maybe you have some emotional trauma because someone close to you died and you go through puberty and you get rejected and all these different things, your body can twist and twerk and as a result, your body, in order to accommodate, let's say you've twisted an ankle in order to accommodate, well, maybe you're, you start walking a little differently. So you're at a very microscopic level your body's building in compensations because now you've got this ankle. Well, your ankle heals up and you're not aware that, okay, there's a slight adjustment that's taking place in the way that you're moving. And then over time, different things come in and after a while, the compensations start building up and now we gotta have compensations for the compensations. <laughs> and as time goes on and you see old people and it looks like they're shrinking, mm -hmm. it's just the structure that's giving out. So. 
what we do is it's going in there and it's reorganizing and it's opening and it's unwinding those compensations. Let's get that ankle organized. Let's do the hip. Let's do it. And so there's that. Now you're taking this person, but you're not just taking them back. You're taking them to a place they've probably never been. You're really organizing on a level they've never experienced. So now, now you've got them organized around gravity. And what happens is it's like, okay, well now you move into that that world of effortlessness, that world of ease. When you move, it's easy. When you do things, it's like you're working with gravity, and you start to experience gravity not as this thing that oh, I'm just I'm just dying. I'm so tired. It starts to, it's something that gives you energy and it gives you a sense of lift. And it's like, you just have so much energy. And now you go through your day and that's the amount that you started your day with, you have it for creation as opposed to, well, we're going to take this off and this off because just to try to keep you upright because your shoulders are like this. You know what I'm saying? Am I being clear here? Yes, absolutely. I'm wondering why we can't do this for ourselves like all of the exercising all the stretching the foam rolling why does it not work it's different because if I'm we're so we're one thing we're really really one thing and I, if I sit there and I try to do something to my arm that's all connected it's this arm is trying <laughs> to do this so there's a level at which it's not going to work because you're never working on just one thing. You're working on this relationship. All people are is a relationship. You know, it's like, what's a knee? Well, I, it's where these two bones kind of come together. Well, why, why do they come together there? Well, you know, it's like because of the soft tissue that holds them there. It's like, so it's, it's relationship. Everything's relationship. And you take that farther out and you extrapolate. Think about who you are as a person in your life you are a relationship to you know this place this physical place to these people to a profession to parents to all kinds of things that's what we are so if you never got rolfed you could only do as as well as you could do and be missing out on everything that that kind of alignment brings you yeah it's I mean, you can do certain things for yourself, obviously. There's a lot of, you know, you've had Buddhist priests doing, you know, prostrations for, you know, 10,000 prostrations to get to whatever. You can do things to help yourself. But this is like, this is really like a fast track. You get in there and there's a dynamic when somebody else is working on you. Think in terms of the journey. Excuse me, if I'm going to take a minute here. Yeah. Th think in terms of the journey of life. Okay, you start out and you got to survive. You, so, you know, it's like that business of screaming for, for when I want to get fed just doesn't go very far. And after a while, it's like, okay, you got these parents, you got these other people. And it's like, if you're going to survive, okay, well, okay, I see this one acts like this. Okay, if I do this, they kind of like this. And, oh, okay. You know, they don't like that. Okay. <clears throat> and so you're accommodating, you're trying to fit in. After a while, a personality starts and you start to develop what I like to think of as a baton okay now you're trying to orchestrate this life you're the you're the leader of the orchestra okay and you're creating the music and whatever and that's the journey okay but what happens is there's an evolution that we go through as we get older and part of what the goal is for me is to relinquish my baton to let you, when I'm working with you, when I'm with you, whether I'm working with somebody or not, this is who I am. It's not just a profession. And it's like, okay, I'm letting you wave your baton and create this music. And I try my best to get inside of that music. And I try to get right in harmony with you so that life becomes a dance. And I let go. And, I, and as a result, I allow myself to be changed while at the same time adding energy to you so that you can take it and you can change and evolve yourself. My. Is there anything more to be said about that process? I imagine it takes an amount of 
uh, compassion or something to see when someone walks in the door, how are they telling you what they need? Because they're not going to come out and say it, and they don't know consciously, probably. Well, we have two, we have two types of secrets in the way I see it. We have the secrets that you are not going to tell me, that you don't want me to know, whatever, but you're aware of. Then you have the secrets that you're not aware of that you are telling me. Now, there may be other secrets that nobody knows, but who cares about those? <laughs> but you follow what I'm saying? So yeah. when you walk in, when somebody walks in, I get to see who they are, how they present themselves, but also unconscious things. There are so many things in, in the ways people move, talk, look, everything. You know, mm -hmm. how a person dresses, how they wear their hair, the, the pitch of their voice, how fast they talk, what they do with their arms. It just goes on and on and on. There are so many things, and it's like... But it all tells you something? Yeah. Or it all creates like a big overarching picture? I would... I'm not sure what the difference of that is, but yeah, I would say, yes, it's, it's like, you can watch somebody walk down the street, in a second you can tell, oh yeah, that person's bummed out about something. What, yeah. what, well, you didn't sit there and calculate, well, they're carrying their head at such and such an angle. No, mm -hmm. it's like, boom. You know, that's those whole micro movements that we have in our muscles and whatever, so we can pick up where, what a person's feeling, things like mm -hmm. that. But you can also pick up a lot more as, you know, you do this and you watch people and you watch people and watch people, you start to pick up a lot more and you can pick up nuances and, you know, does a person trust you? Are they kind of looking like this or, you know, or, you know, there's just so many nuances. It's kind of fun, actually. Is there to, more of uh, the stuff they don't want you to know or is, or, or is there more of the stuff that they're not aware of? Which one speaks louder? Or does it depend on the person? It really depends upon the person. Person. Some people could walk in and there's like this openness. There's and it's incredible openness. Then there's people. It's like they walk in and it's like you know it's harder than this floor. You know <laughs> if you were to try. It's, it's amazing though. And how did I walk in? Just delightfully. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> um, well, you would uh, remember you had had the work. Yours yeah. was kind of a fascinating situation because you had had the work. You walked in, and when somebody comes to me like that, it's like usually it's like, okay, I'm going to do three sessions on the person. When I start working on you, it was like, you know, I, I kind of need to do five <laughs> sessions. And, I, you know, I know that's not what you had signed up for, but you were very open right away. So it's like, okay, hey, you know, so there was a, a strong sense of trust pretty quick. You were, it's like, okay, hey, you know, once you get the. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Once you get that person, you know, you get the hands on them and they start working, it's like something takes place there. Something really, and for, you could trust really quickly. And it's like, it's like as I moved in, it's like you were like, oh, you could just like go right into it. And that's very powerful. And that just allows things to move faster. Some people, it's not so much. It's like, you know, it's like, eh, I want you a little bit more. You know, just take your time with this whole process. They don't say that, but, you know. So you've said that you add energy? Sure. What do you mean by that? Is it an intention? Is it... Well, it is intention. It is, it's energy. So there's... Think of this as a hologram, okay? That's, that's really a good... Think of what is a hologram? You ever see one of those things where it's like... I've seen Star Wars. <laughs> I don't know if they use holograms. They probably do. Yeah, help me one, Kenobi. You're my only hope. So it's, it's where, I don't know all the science to it, but where they split a beam and they, they reconnect the beam and so you can have like the same image in different places and it's the exact same image and you can have this thing and it's, it's just this way of splitting. So it gives, a, um, it gives a different perspective. It's a way of understanding things. So... If you think in terms of, um, like, you can, you can think about something at this level, at a very specific level, very tiny, okay? Like, we can talk in terms of, like, the atom. And it's like, well, you got an atom, you got, you know, such and such, you got electrons spinning around, whatever. Well, it's, it's kind of fascinating that that's kind of similar to a sun, you know, and planets spinning around it, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, 
so there's this level at which you can take and look at things and everything makes sense from a, as if it's the same thing. So I can relate to you. You understand what relationship means. You can relate to a group of people. You can relate to a tree or nature or whatever. So there's just all of these levels, these dynamics. So when I'm sitting there and I'm adding energy to you, yes, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm doing this to your tissue or I'm pushing or squeezing or whatever. There's pressure, I'm adding pressure. Now on the cellular level, that stuff, that fascia, remember, it's got similar matrix to the quartz. So as you add pressure, energy is released. So I, from a tissue standpoint, you're able to let go. And then there's also the letting go that takes place inside of you. But it takes place within the relationship. It's not you by yourself. It takes place within the relationship. After a while, there's, there's this whole evolution that this goes through where after a while, it's like all of life becomes like a session because you're so open. You let everything, you are just so open to life that you let everything transform you. Am I going too far off the deep end? Is that, so is that the level that you're at now? I'm a maggot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've just had this opportunity. I got I got this work done on me back in 1984. So, you know, and I've had sessions as the years have gone on. And it's just a journey. Everybody's journey. That's the truth I really want to emphasize is everybody's perfect. If you can get into that notion that everybody's perfect, you're perfect exactly where you are. For me to tell you what truth is, that's... Can I take in a, a side path here? Yes, please do. Okay. People confuse, I think, facts with truth. They're not the same thing. Mm. I can say something to you that's, that may be factually true, but it could hurt you as well. Mm. To me, truth is fact that's wrapped in compassion. That's, that's entirely different. Now, when I speak truth to you, that's different than me just articulating some fact. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Truth being a, a more life-affirming thing, something that's, that's beneficial. It's, it sees you. It's part of that relationship, that, that going inside, getting on that same wavelength. When a person's dancing, one person's leading, one person's following, whatever, but they're, they're dancing in that. It's one. You just see the one movement. You don't see like two separate things. There's a surrender. The whole notion in the, um, there's something called Saturn energy, which I, I like the concept of. And it's all creation comes from Saturn energy. And what that means is, let's say you're an artist. You know how to paint. You can draw in charcoal. You can work in metal. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can carve wood. There's lots of different things. But when you get really good, it's because you gave up working in metal. It's because you gave up working in the wood. You gave up all of these things and you narrowed your focus to just doing oil painting. And that allowed you, by giving up all these other, to go to a level that's much deeper. To create at a much deeper level, at a more profound level, as opposed to very superficial, pieces of metal and pieces of wood, etc. So there's this journey that we're taking as we go through life where it, there's a, that juxtaposition where, well, okay, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm cutting off myself to here or there. But is it the energy of we're not surviving and so we're cutting things off? Or are we taking something and we're creating? What's happening to the space in our body? As you go through this work, what's, what are we doing? We're opening up the space in the body. What's happening to your life? Are we opening up the space in your life? That's what relationships that are beneficial do, where people try to see each other. My Yeah, to, to bring it back, <laughs> does, does, <laughs> does the raw thing of getting the sense of alignment, does it help you get more clarity into those kinds of things? Like, what things do I need to give up to make... Um, it allows to you to create. 
-hmm. because in letting go, now you're moving with gravity. You've got all that energy from the beginning of the day and you're not spending it just trying to stay upright because you're all twisted and gnarly. So there's a very <laughs> scientific term for you. It's one of my favorite words, gnarly. There you go. So you've got all this energy. So now you're creating, you're dancing with life. When you see people, you're going to see them. You're going to see what's there. You're going to see more holographically because you're going to see little things, but you're going to see the bigger picture as well. You're going to see not just this Caitlin that's sitting right here. You're going to see this life, this this baby, this old person, this journey. You're going to see the things. It's a, it's a journey that you're going to see. That's the dance. So I encountered a guy in the in the woods in the park when I had my camera with me and he wanted me to take pictures of him. And I was like, yeah, sure, this is cool, a little collaborative thing. And he, he's like cool and he kept posing. And I was kind of like, like, I wanted to tell him to do less less the less posing the less stuff you put on and try to do the more I can see of of who you are and that's, all the all the nuances really come through that's pretty insightful though that's really good for you to be able to do that usually I shoot landscapes and I don't tell the trees like do less <laughs> like, the trees just being what it is you bend that bow <laughs> <laughs> people aren't like that people like we resist like being how we naturally want to be we want to Put, put something else on, we want to posture up. But that's part of those stages that we go through when we're young. Mm -hmm. People get stuck in stages. Mm -hmm. So look at how many people in this world right now are just crazy about, it's got to be this way, it's got to be that way. You know, abortion's mm -hmm. right, abortion's wrong, guns are right, guns are wrong. <laughs> you know, and it's like that absolute, you know, and we want to appeal. Look at all the energy. We just had this election. Mm -hmm. Look at all the energy people put into Somebody else is going to be the answer. Right. Uh, this person's going right. to be the answer. Republican, Democrat, doesn't matter. That person's going to be there, but this person. And it's like, that's all extrinsic. Truth comes from an intrinsic place. It comes from that quiet place. And it emanates out. All that other stuff, you know, when we're looking for survival, we're trying to manipulate this situation or that situation. Well, okay, I, that, that kid's got something I want. I'll bop him on the head. And I'll, oh, oh, the power structure doesn't like that you know but it's like we're trying to manipulate outside to make it conform to us to what we want mm -hmm. I want guns I want abortion I want this I want that so I'm gonna vote for this person that person what we're trying to impose that so that we can have what we want as opposed to going deeper and emanating a compassion for what's outside Dude, I don't know if I told you, um, I wanted to, while the election and everything was happening, and everyone was so fired up and getting really uppity, and <laughs> <laughs> I found it, um, I'm pretty laid back as it is, but I found it impossible to, like, judge people for their beliefs and their, and their rage and stuff, and I was like, I don't know if I have any views at this point at all, because I just, I don't know. No so matter, much noise. It's, uh, so much noise, but just just kind of accepting all of people's views. I mean, you don't have to argue your views at me. I I understand. I I accept you. I know. I I get what you're saying, and it's totally fine. I don't like. I don't disagree. <laughs> yeah, but they have to do that. That's the stage they're stuck in, yeah. and to understand that they can't be any other way. So that yeah, now it's yeah. like okay, they have to be that. And it's like oh okay, so it's like. It's like, get into their dance. Get into mm -hmm. who they are. Even though it's nuts sometimes, <laughs> it's like, get into it and let yourself be changed. And that ability to, to allow yourself to get into their world, into their rhythm, so let them have that baton, it can be a profound experience for somebody who's never had that. So many people have not had that. So if, if you know, but that's, that's, you know, so you have a lot of people and they're just kind of, Got blindfolds on. They're all bumping around, bumping yeah. into each other, and getting pissed off because you know whatever. Because no one wants to listen to each other, oh, and no yeah. one wants to actually do the dance. Everyone just wants to be right. <laughs> but if yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. But you know, you step back and you see this not as this moment, but you see this as a much bigger thing from time. It's like what's the journey through time that's taking place? You know, where is this all headed? Where are they? Where is this coming from? You know. There's so many things that you can look at. The whole idea of the 60s, 
you know, do your own thing, you know. Before that, it was World War II, everybody pitch in, you know, sacrifice, you know, for the cause and whatever. And then it became, oh, well, everybody just do your own thing, whatever it is, you just do your own thing. And now we're like, we're running into these situations where it's like, oh, well, wait a second, what you're doing affects me and this and that. And it's like, well, so now we have this younger generation that's going, oh, well, hey, we got climate change, we got to deal with it. There's this pandemic, so let's, let's, you know, maybe we need to work together. Maybe we need to sacrifice. Them. So there's, so you watch and you just, you can go even farther beyond, just even that can narrow, be a little bit narrow. It's, I so, know this is so scattered and I, but I'm, I'm no, having no, fun. No, no, it's totally fine. Yeah, we can just talk and it's awesome. And there's so many things I want to talk about. Um, can we talk about the line? The line. Yeah. Yes. Or is that like secret? Yeah, secret society. <laughs> Do you know the handshake? <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's simple. It's one line. Um, <laughs> so at the end of my five sessions with you, I discovered the line, the like balance point around which your whole body can rest once it's ready to or <laughs> once right. you've orchestrated that moment. And uh, it's a magic moment. Can you better describe what the line is? Or do you want to? The line is, is a relationship. I mean, as far as, you know, just, it, it's very simple to just say, oh, well, it's the relationship of your body being in alignment with gravity and, you know, and being organized around gravity because that's what we do. That's easy to say. The experience of the line is something that's incredibly profound. There's a sense of, there was, there was research done many years ago uh, by, I, think, I believe it was Pascarelli and Bull back in like the 1940s and 1950s. And they studied people in all their different ways and how their body holds a position based on an emotion. So if you're angry, you know, this, what. And what they would do is they would try to get people, they would put people in positions and they would say, okay, well now let's say they put them in the position of anger. And they would say, okay, well now we want you to uh, experience uh, curiosity or we want you to experience fear or we want you to experience happiness or whatever and they found that it's impossible whatever your body's organized around think about all those compensations all those tightness all those effects that's the emotions that is your base level that's what you're walking around with well now you refer to it once as the jail people the, yeah, come in yeah, and they're yeah. kind of in this this posture and they're it's stuck in this, this jail they arrive in. Yeah. Right, and it restricts the limits of what they can experience yeah. and what they can express. Mm -hmm. Well, what this work is doing is it's opening all that up. So now, the one thing that they found that adults couldn't experience, mm -hmm. that kids could, mm -hmm. was joy. And what happens is when you, for, you know this experience, you felt it. When you stood up at the end of that work and you started walking, you just emanated just light, you know. I worked on this doctor, very mental, and this is back in the days when we would take the pictures of people in their underwear before and after the 10 sessions, okay? We'd take them before and then after and so they could see the differences. Nowadays, it doesn't seem to fly so well, so we <laughs> I do people just walking up and down the hallway, things like that. But for this guy, it, it had been seven sessions, and I was like, uh, I'm not sure if he's going to stay with this. I'm not sure if he's getting this. You know, so I decided I'm going to take some pictures after the seventh session. Mm -hmm. So I took the pictures, and this man sat at the side of the table, and, he, and they were really profound changes, really profound. And here's this doctor who has all this education, all these years of experience, and he's looking at these pictures, and his brain is going... <laughs> this isn't possible and he's just sitting there looking at the pictures and I can't get him to leave I can't get him to <laughs> he's sitting after a while I'm like yeah you know whatever I try to casually take the pictures back he won't let him go <laughs> he's just staring at these pictures because it's just this was interfering with everything he knew to be true and it's so it's a very different journey for different people yeah you know yeah, what struck me was that all, so many of these things, tight hip flexors, um, I tried to, to work on for so long, for years. I never would have got there. Well, remember, 
also, one of the things about this work that's different from like anybody else working on you is I would never look at a hip flexor by itself. Right. There's the whole body yeah. that's organized around that hip flexor being the way it is. So even though, I'll give you a real good example. Let's say somebody walks into somebody's office and goes, I'm having a lot of pain right here. See one person, they go, oh, carpal tunnel. Yeah. We can do an operation there. Maybe they don't see that person, they see somebody else. And the person goes, oh, well, okay, you've got some twisting in your arm. Let's, let's unwind the twisting in your arm. Okay? That'll, that'll take care of it. Go to somebody else. Oh, you got a vertebrae that's out. We're going to pop your vertebrae, you know, and we'll get you. that Because there's a nerve that goes down there, and we'll do this. Yeah. And maybe that's what they do, and, you know, but it doesn't seem to work. Nothing, you know, and it just doesn't seem to address the problem. Let's just say that somebody really messed their leg up when they were younger, okay? And so now it's ended up throwing their pelvis off. As a result, you've got a sheet of fascia, just like this shirt that I'm wearing, okay? Let's say this thing starts to go like this as a result of the pelvis being off. Now it's pulling up here. Well, because it's pulling up here, the vertebrae in your neck start going forward because there's nothing to stop them. But the vertebrae in your chest, they can't go anywhere because there's ribs holding them in place. So now you got this shearing motion going on in the neck where there's nerves involved. And there's twisting going on in the arm. And next thing you know, you got this thing. So you unwind it from down there, up here, boop, boop, and by the time you get to the wrist, well, there's no problem with the wrist. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, similar to um, IT band. IT band. The more I looked at it, the more I was like, there's so much at play here where that's just the thing, the IT band is just the part that is compensating the hardest for everything else that is going on. Yeah, it's yeah. the thing that you feel, just because you feel it there. Mm -hmm. It could be the weak link, you know, in some ways it could be the weak link, you know, if you've got a thing, because so many things are compensating this and that. Oh, that, that was just the kid that got left off, <laughs> you know, and didn't get the food at the table, you know, it's too small. All the bigger ones got the food and there was nothing left. You know, and so an IT band, you know, depending upon what you do, the activities you do, the way your body's organized, maybe that becomes, up, oh, boom, you know, right. and now you can't walk. So this all, okay, it makes it seem like you throw off one thing, twist your ankle, everything else kind of gets messed up, has to compensate, but I also like to believe that we're robust creatures that can come back from a lot. <laughs> well, that's true. And obviously, you twist your ankle, after a while, the ankle's healed. You don't have a lot, you know, it's like you don't necessarily notice a lot of compensation. Yeah. And you just go on and you go about your life, you know. But things are building up is the problem. The problem is that the body's overwhelmed, okay? When your body's organized, like yours is, it's like, little things aren't going to overwhelm the body and there's it's a lot easier to get out of trouble when something happens to a body that's not organized it's not so easy to get out of the trouble it takes longer to heal things are tighter so you don't have the blood flow uh, you're more compromised in when you do things that you're gonna hurt something because things are tight you don't have the resiliency in the tissue so there's all of these things and then it's like since you don't have the resiliency and something goes in every, all this stuff's tight so boom it just hits here and and that's and now it gives out or a, you blow a disc or whatever somebody else does we don't want you to blow a disc <laughs> <laughs> so what is the most rewarding part of this work for you what what keeps you having fun every day oh it's so dynamic each person's so different and it's the journey it's really the journey it's like I can sit there and I can work on this and I can organize this tissue and all that but it's like what's the meaning of that yeah. what's the meaning what's it mean to you when you stand up at the end of that that last session I did and your face just explodes it's like it's like that's pretty powerful you know when I'm working on a person they walk in the office and I just do, do something all of a sudden they, you know it's like you see their eyes start to go wait a second what is this you know and now they can breathe a little better you know, oh my God, I worked on this guy today. 
and I was doing some stuff on his neck. He's like, "Oh my God, you, you put my head back on." <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> experience like experience too. Yeah. You know, it's like that's so powerful for him. You follow what I'm saying? It's just a powerful experience. And there's so many different things, and there's things that are subtle a person doesn't even see. I had this wonderful woman. I don't know if I told you about her or not. Wonderful woman. She could hardly stand up when she came to see me. She's delightful, but she'd had a car accident, and she could, she had a cane, and she, as a result of the car accident, it caused her to gain a bunch of weight. She, you know, and she just could hardly stand up. And at the end of her tenth session, she didn't know what she was going to do with the cane. She got up off the table <laughs> and she started dancing. Aww. And it was one of the most beautiful dances you'll ever see. Aww. You know, Michael Jackson will never <laughs> dance that well, you know? And it's just beautiful. And then he, he, she's walking out, and she, she's about to go around the corner, and she stops. She looks back at me, and she goes, I can walk. She gives this big smile, and she leaves. And it's like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's why I do this work. That's powerful. It's, 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 it's a gift. life back. It's just a gift. It's it's a privilege. It's a privilege to be the witness, you yeah. know, you know, or be the guide. I'm not really doing anything. I'm adding energy. You're the one doing the letting go. I'm not the one. You're the one doing the letting go. I'm just trying to get into your rhythm and, and do it in a way that facilitates you letting go. Well, that's what I was wondering about how the letting go happens and why it seems like it happens so much better when there's another person there. It's almost as if the witness is key. Like something's been wanting to let go. So someone sees that and they're like, it's okay, you can. And then it's like, okay, I'll finally let this go. Well, there's a lot that we don't see about ourselves. We, there's all that unconscious that you can't see about yourself, I can't see about myself. You know, so many times I'm working on people and they're like, oh, I didn't know about that area. And, uh, you know, you just, and so you start whining. And it's like, all of a sudden something else gives, and it's like, oh, oh. Hmm, that's pretty cool. <laughs> you know, it's like this woman, I, I did something on her wrist, and she's like, oh, my God, I can play piano again. <gasps> and she's been playing piano again. Yeah. And it's like the relationship, is that's what we are. We are relationship. And when you can surrender to that and you can just dance and flow with that person, you know, it's like when a person's on the table, I'm not just doing this kind of thing to you. I'm grabbing you with my elbow and I'm doing this and I'm getting up here and I'm, and then I'm moving right in rhythm with what you're, how I want you to move. And it's like, we're right in there. It's together. Love is a very powerful thing. And that's what this is. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. We, we screw that word up so much in our society. But it's like getting in and letting you have the baton, letting you create the music, and I'm going to dance. I'm going to dance inside with you. And, there's, and then there's not room for the demons. That's right. Why did I, why did I feel so dangerous after? No. Oh. I, I was just ready to just rip for a tear, and it was great. A lot of energy. A lot of energy. Yeah, it's like, well, so what do I do with all this creative energy? It's, it's a new experience. It's like, well, It is. It's like, well, I already had a lot of creative energy. This is so, different. This is different. This is this is you, your creation getting in tune with the world, with that. Not it, whether it be this specific moment, whether it be the bigger moment, whether it be a bigger group. It's like you start to expand in space and time. That Whoa. that's that's now it's not just creating oh like oh this little, you're creating you know a whole reality one of the things I tell some people I don't tell everybody but some people what it, well you know you got to take each person right yeah. but there are people when they walk in for that first session I do tell them sometimes you know if you can do it let go of every preconceived idea that you have about reality and just Whoa. just just let go into this process and just see how far you can travel with this I think just you told me that go. Well, some people I do, some people I don't. It just yeah, depends just whether or not. Just feel them out. See if some people wouldn't like me telling them that. It kind of sounds. 
<laughs> sounds like uh, you want the red pill or the blue pill. <laughs> That's very much a matrix statement. Wow, we just took this so deep. It's awesome. Okay, um, I maybe just like have another question or two or anything else that you want to say after that. I'm wondering why sometimes it feels really good. Like you like, are oh, very good at this, by the way. I, I really like your, your just, good questions. I'm just curious. <laughs> Why, why does it feel really good? Like, oh, that was so, that was so tight. That was, oh man, it felt amazing to get that released. And why sometimes does it hurt? Well, sometimes things can hurt from the standpoint of it hurt when it went in and you're unwind. And so remember how the tissue can, can mat kind of down. So yeah. fascia can mat down to protect an area. Mm-hmm. So that's why, okay, so let's say somebody's had a dislocated shoulder. So all this fascia starts matting down. Next thing you know, instead of this person being able to do their shoulder like this, they're going like this to move their shoulder. They're not really moving the shoulder anymore. Right. They're moving around it. Well, that's because all that fascia starts to bind and, you know, to protect. So, well, since they're moving like this, they don't feel the pain in the shoulder because they're really not moving the shoulder. Mm-hmm. So you start to open this up, and they're like, oh, my God, it feels like I, I feel that pain of when I dislocated. So maybe they feel it for a week or two. You're unwinding it. You're taking them back through, so you're taking it out of the body. But it takes a while, and so those nerves, it's like that have been hunkered down. So you're you're not going to feel this. It's like well, now you open it up. It's like oh, so there's that letting go on that level. So it can hurt, and at the same time, it can feel wonderful. You know? Yeah, learn not to judge it and not to label the feeling is. As good or bad, really, because... No, it's more authentic. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's just, it's you. It's your experience. That's why I'm inside you. You know, it's like, I'm not working on you. I'm working inside of you. A x-ray vision. <laughs> well, no, it's more a matter of, like, I can sit there and do this, or I can move this so that I've got the whole body is uh. moving. I can take a leg and I can sit there and I can just do this, or I can... I can move it in a way where I'm affecting something up there in the rib cage or, mm-hmm. or the neck or the shoulder. So, so for example, that guy I worked on who was a professional volleyball player, you know, I start working on his feet and he's like, oh, wow, I can really feel that in my elbow, you know? <laughs> How cool he was that connected. Yeah. Cool. Because so, I imagine not everyone can feel that and make that connection. Oh, I'm, with some people I'm happy if they can feel the work in the feet. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to say about Rolf or anything we didn't cover? You know, I haven't even been looking at the camera. I just, I just That's fine. Really, I don't think you're supposed to the camera. It's just the witness. There you go. <laughs> it's, it's just, it, it's a gift. It's just, it's, it's a gift. For me, it's a real gift. And it's a privilege to do this. That's all. And, uh, you know, I guess if I have a dream that someday somebody will go to school and I'll be able to mentor them after they get out of school and so that I can take them so they can go beyond me. I don't, I don't want to take somebody and make them as good as me. I want them to be able to, because they're going to have whatever their gifts are. And if I can just kind of facilitate some things so that they can go beyond me and, you know, advance things, I think that would be really cool. Did you ever get to Rolf a baby like Ida Rolf in, in her pictures? She's, like, checking out the screen. Oh, you've seen that, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I had a newborn once or twice. Um, cool. But you don't do this 10 series on them. No. It's a matter of seconds, and they're like, okay, they're done, you know. Because they're just, they're so in the moment, and they're, you know, they're letting go. And it's like, whatever stage they're in, it's like you're just finishing, you're just kind of putting the finishing touches on the stage. And boom, now they're into the next stage, and that's all there is, you know. Now they're where they need to be. So it's, it's different. It's very different. There's a lot of little stages, you know, lifting the head up's a stage, learning to roll over is a stage, you know, getting up on the elbows is a stage, learning to walk. There's m- just a myriad of stages, you know, and there's emotional stuff, and, you know. There's a stage when you get older, rules, well, you can't do that. The rules of the game are such that you can, you're not allowed to do that, you know. Always hold mom or dad's hand when you're crossing the street. Well, there comes a point where you stop doing that, you know, and it's like you move beyond the rules. A lot of people in our society are stuck in yeah. the formulas of the rules, and it's like, no, 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 you gotta own the rules. Mm-hmm. So instead of the rules, you know, you being made for the rules, no, now the rules are made for you. Whoa. And you're... I hate rules. I hate rules so much. I make the rules for 
rules now. <laughs> <laughs> Power. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking with me and all of us wherever I show this. Well, this is fun. I I never done this. This is this Next fun. time you ask me questions. I think yeah. Well, no, that's <laughs> that, that's really the truth. Is the listening. That's the truth. It's the letting go and it's like I want to hear your story. You know, I'm more interested, for example, in what's your experience? You went through this, you know, from the first session that I worked on you. When you first came and met me, you know, it's like you know, you don't know who I am. What kind of, who, what kind of a weirdo I was might I be? you up. You remember? Well, yes, you're very funny. <laughs> you laughed the whole time. But it's like you're easy though. But people have. To, that's part of that journey. When mm -hmm. a person first meets me, it's not that sense of trust. It evolves, and that that allows the process to go deeper and deeper, and let them let go more and more. Yeah. That's that's, and it's like what a privilege to be in the middle of that. Yeah. It's just a privilege. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. <laughs> I am. It, I, I feel incredibly lucky. Lucky, lucky, lucky. There's a different sense being around you than other people, for sure. People are. <laughs> Not <laughs> sense. <laughs> but <laughs> people, everyone has an agenda in the world, and then you're like, what's your agenda? Like, how can I, how can I dance in this space? And that's very rare. Oh, I'm, I'm just lucky. I'm just lucky. <laughs> I really am. I, I take no credit. I'm just lucky.